with hairy eyes, got to shrink and harmonize, when dirty ghosts come out to socialize. Oh, in the readings mm -hmm. so i can say hello hello chat what's up chris what's up nuff uh i'm joined by some very serious gentlemen well i say very serious people too thank you nerf i'll i'll i will chug my entire cup full cup of coffee in one go because of you <laughs> thank you like i wasn't planning on it but now i am I was going to enjoy that, but this is probably faster and more efficient anyway. So, for tonight, we're going to be doing something different. I might do games later, but to start off with, I'm going to be doing SCP readings. We're going to read through a bunch of SCPs. Good to see you too, Chris. Starting off with one of my favorites, not my absolute favorite. That That's going to be the second one we do, but 
this one we're starting with because Aiden's Aiden's got time limits, and so he's he's he's, nice. he's helping us out as the voice of one of my fa other favorites, SCP is zero four nine, the Plague Doctor. We also have my man Milky. What's up? Who's he's got a very creepy face? It looks like someone punched him in the face every time he talks. Yep. Yeah. But that that's the way of things, you know. And then we've got Rachel Elsie joining us as well. She is, yeah, yeah. She's a spectator who's also going to comment on us like the whole time, mm -hmm. shitting on our bad performances as we read through these things. So let me go and get the screen up. I'm going to have to do some display capturing. There we go. So here we go. SCP-049, which I'm going uh, to shrink my Fuji tech, the Fuji tech a little bit. So that these lads, four, four, zero, four, nine, are the professor in charge of, and who knows it best will be our, mm -hmm. my good friend Milky here. He will be reading through our item classes and describing it to you. Now I should leave Milky to do as he mm -hmm. does best. Okay, uh, I'm just like making sure my internet uh, is not being a bitch. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. As you guys can see, I am a member of the SCP um, faculty. Um, we are doing our lovely SCP-049, aka the Plague Doctor. Uh, and don't let the mask fool you. He's no doctor. Well, he is a doctor, but he's not a doctor. Anyway. Let me cure you. <laughs> no, let me zombify. He wants to cure you in oh. permanent. Thing. Exactly. Mm, he'll give you a light tap on the head and you're dead. Come yeah, here, Milky. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay, let's allow Milky to. to this. Uh, so, SCP 049 is contained within a. Wait, you want me to read all of this? Like, uh, just, all of this. You can just read uh, containment procedures and object class. And object class. Yeah, but the object class is Euclid. Object class is Euclid, meaning. It is easier than most to contain. It is not mm -hmm. safe. It, we cannot s easily contain it with okay. with zero chance of escape. However, it is containable. Within the SCP universe, there are different object classes. Each object class refers to how easy it is to contain said object. In this case, we have a Euclid class. There are two other classes. This is the middle class. The other two are safe which is self-explanatory, and Keter, which is basically impossible. There are, there are three other special ones, but they are unlikely. Okay, whenever you're ready, take it away. So, SCP-049 is contained within a standard secure humanoid containment cell in, a, in research sector 02 at site 19. SCP-049 must be sedated before any attempts to transport it. During transport, SCP-049 must be secured within a Class 3 humanoid restriction harness, uh, including a, a, a locking collar and an extension restraint. Mm. It's not a kink, people. It's, it, it is necessary. And monitored by no fewer than two armed guards. While SCP-049 is generally cooperative with most Foundation personnel, outbursts or sudden changes in behavior are to be met with elevated force. Under no circumstances should any personnel come into direct contact with 049 during these outbursts. In the event of 049's becoming aggressive, the application of lavender has been shown to produce a calming effect on the entity. Once calmed, SCP-049 generally becomes compliant and will return to the containment with little resistance. In order to facilitate the ongoing containment of 049, the entity is to be provided with the corpse of a recently deceased animal, typically a bovine or other large mammal, once every two weeks for study. Corpses that become instances of 049-2 are to be removed from 049's containment cell and incinerated. SCP-049 is no longer permitted to interact with human subjects, and requests for human subjects are to be denied. 
And then we have this beautiful image of SCP-049 and his beautiful, beautiful doctor, medieval doctor outfit with the plague mask. And how it's become part of his head. Now, as, as Milky has said, the, the containment breaches are rather good. Now, now there, is, there has been a temporary containment procedure update, T Addendum 049 3.3. Uh, the Containment Committee Order 049.S19.17.1, SCP 049 is no mm -hmm. longer permitted to interact directly with any members of Foundation staff, nor is it to be provided with any additional corpses to be used in its surgeries. This order shall persist indefinitely until such a time a consensus regarding the ongoing containment of SCP-049 can be reached. Now, there's a description of 049. 049 is a humanoid entity, roughly 1.9 meters in height, which bears the appearance of a medieval plague doctor, as my good colleague Milky has stated. While SCP-049 appears to be wearing th the thick robes and ceramic masks indicative of that profession, the garments seem to the garments instead seem to have grown out of 049's body over time. Uh, nearly indistinguishable from whatever form is beneath them. X-rays indicate that despite this, 049 does have a humanoid skeletal structure beneath its outer layer, as you can see in the image below. SCP-049 is capable of speech in a variety of languages, though it mm -hmm. tends to prefer English or medieval French. While SCP-049 is genuinely cordial and cooperative with Foundation staff, it can become especially irritated or at times outright aggressive. It feels like it, that it is in the presence of what it calls the pestilence. Although the exact nature of this pestilence is currently unknown to the Foundation researchers, it does seem to be an issue of immense concern to 049. 049 will become hostile with individuals it sees, is being affected by the pestilence, often having to re be restrained should it encounter such. If left unchecked, SCP-049 will generally attempt to kill any such individual. 049 is capable of causing all biological functions of an organism to cease through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown. And autopsies of 049's victims have invariably been inconclusive. SCP-049 has expressed frustration or remorse after these killings, indicating they have done little to kill the pestilence, though will usually seek to perform a crude surgery on the corpse using implements contained within a black doctor's bag it carries on its person at all times. Space within this bag is seemingly anomalously large, as SCP-049 has been observed pulling objects larger than the bag itself from within it in order to operate on deceased subjects. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in the creation of instances of 049-2. 049-2 instances are reanimated corpses that have been operated on by 049. These instances do not seem to retain any of their prior memories or mental functions, having only basic motor skills and response mechanisms. While these instances are generally inactive, moving very little, and in a generally ambulatory fashion, they can become extremely aggressive if provoked or if directed by SCP-049. SCP-049-2 instances express active biological functions, though these are vastly different from currently understood human physiology. Despite these alterations, SCP-049 often remarks that the subjects have been cured. Now, whatever that means, I, I don't like it. Every time he brings up the pestilence, it's rather creepy. Hello, we the following interview was conducted by Raymond Hamm during the initial investigation. Now, this is where my special guests come into their own. Interviewer, Dr. Raymond Hamm, site 85. Interviewee, SCP-049. Begin log. Alors, comment devrions-nous commencer une introduction? Is that in French? Can we get a translator? Oh, the King's English. No need for translation, sir. I speak it well enough. Good. My name is Dr. Raymond Hamm, and I... Uh, 
doctor, a like-minded individual, no doubt. Wherein is your speciality, sir? Cryptobiology, why? <laughs> a medical man such as myself. Wonders abound, and here I worried I'd been abducted by common street thugs. This place, then, this is your laboratory? I had wondered, as clean as it is, and with such little trace of the pestilence here. The pestilence? What do you mean? The scourge. The great dying. Come now, you know, the... Uh, what is it they call it? The, uh, the... No matter. The pestilence, yes. It abounds outside these walls, you know. So many have succumbed, and many more will continue to, until such time as a perfect cure can be developed. Fortunately, I am very close. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it, you see. The cure to end all cures. When you say the great dying, are you talking about the bubonic plague? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I see. Well, right. Well, the entities are agents encountered at that house. They are dead when you encountered them, yes? And you reanimated them? Hmm. In a manner of speaking. You see things too simply, Doctor. Expand your horizons. Life and death, sickness and health. These are amateur terms for amateur physicians. There is only one ailment that exists in the world of men. And that is the pestilence, and nothing else. Make no mistake, they were very ill, all of them. You think you cured these people? Indeed. My cure is most effective. Things we recovered were not human. Yes. Well, it is not a perfect cure. But that will come with time, and further experimentation. I have spent a lifetime developing my methods, Dr. Ham, and will spend a lifetime more if necessary. Now, we have wasted too much time. There is work to do. I will require a laboratory of my own, one where I can continue my research unaided, and assistance, of course, though I can provide those on my own in time. <laughs> I don't think our organization will be willing to. Nonsense. We are all men of science. Fetch your coat and show me to my quarters, Doctor. Our work begins now. Interviews note. While SCP-049 is capable of communicating in a very human way, there is a strange sense of unease that one experiences when in its presence. Make no mistake, there is something very uncanny about this entity indeed. Additionally, we have confiscated the pointed stick that 049 keeps waving about. Part of this was due to standard confiscation protocols for the possession of anomalies, and part because 049 really is a menace swinging it around like he does. The entity was displeased at first, but after we made some concessions in providing it with test subjects, which are admittedly the benefit, more for the benefit of our own research, it warmed up to the idea. Addendum 049-2, Observation Log. While well, in, in containment at Site-19, SCP-049 has spent a considerable amount of time studying and performing surgery on the various mammalian corpses it has been provided. SCP-049 will routinely spend several days performing surgery, and then, regardless of whether or not the corpse <laughs> becomes an instance of SCP-049-2, spending several more days documenting its findings in a Thick leather journal stored within its doctor's bag. SCP-049 will often seek to share its findings with members of Foundation staff. The following is a log of several occasions during which SCP-049 was observed operating on a mammalian corpse. Observational log 049.0L.1 Summary Subject SCP-049 Preface A test subject D- 8512-3 was introduced to 049's containment cell. The entity expressed sincere gratitude towards all members of the containment and research staff. Observation notes. SCP-049 began by asking D-8512-3 several standard medical questions as it 
began removing tools from his bag. Shortly after finishing his preparation, 049 quickly closed the distance between the two, killing the subject with a touch to his throat. Afterwards, SCP-049 made a number of considerable alterations to the basic structure of the subject's corpse, often introducing fluids from within its bag into the subject by means of a hand-powered pump and copper tubing. Oh no. The resulting SCP... The resulting 049-2 instance became animated, flailing and grasping at the walls of the chamber with a number of manufactured limbs while moaning out of an oblong orifice now present in its sternum. During this time, SCP-049 was observed taking notes of the instance in his journal and remarking to the watching research staff about the efficiency of its cure. Security personnel entered the chamber to move 049 back to containment and were attacked by the instance. The security team dispatched zero, the 049-2 instance and SCP-049 returned to containment with no resistance, stating that it was pleased with the results. Observational log 049-OL2. Summary. Subject SCP-049. Preface. SCP-049 was provided with the corpse of a recently deceased goat. SCP-049 expressed Gratitude at the provision. Observation notes. SCP-049 operated on the goat corpse for several days, eventually resulting in an instance of 049-2. SCP-049 expressed pleasure in this outcome, though admitted the disease was still in its nascent stage. My veterinarian practice is rudimentary. Oh, actually, Aiden, could you please read this part for me? Within the... Apologies. Oh, where are we? Um, so we're on observational log uh, two, just for yep. the quotations for SCP-049. Got you, sorry. The disease was still in its nascent stage. My veterinarian practice is rudimentary, but the patient responded well to the procedure. Observational log 049-OL3. Summary. Subject 049. Preface. 049 was provided with the corpse of a recently deceased orangutan. SCP-049 expressed noted gratitude at the provision due to similarities between the orangutan and common human physiology. SCP-049 spent several days operating on the orangutan, reanimating it several times. However, SCP-049 appeared discontent with the results it experienced, returning, the creature, returning to the creature three times after its initial reanimation for additional work. After it was unable to Animate the corpse a fifth time, 049, uh, yes, 049, return, turn the corpse over to the Foundation staff for incineration, stating, I have learned so much from this, though I fear my early optimism was misplaced. I hadn't yet come across such a, a stumbling block on my road to the cure. More subjects like this would do a great deal in advancing my research. Observational log 0497. Hold. Subject SCP 049. Preface SCP 049 was provided with the corpse of a recently deceased bovine. SCP 049 expressed mild annoyance at the provision, though accepted mm -hmm. it nonetheless. Mm -hmm. SCP 049 has stated its desire to work on human subjects several times between this occasion and the earlier provision of an orangutan. Noting discontentedness when they would not be provided. Observational notes. SCP-049 spent several days operating on the bovine corpse, breaking only to dine on a requested dinner of thin crackers, salted pork, and hard cheese. Mm. Didn't know that. SCP-049 has expressed that it does not require sustenance, but it enjoys and feels that food helps to put it in the right mind to operate. Beginning first by embalming the corpse, 049 was observed producing a number of long syringes from its bag, each containing a different dark viscous fluid. SCP-049 described these fluids as essences of the humors and elaborated by saying the pestilence may bring... Oh, do you mind reading this, please? 
The pestilence may bring about a systematic imbalance. In such a case, before true healing can begin, one must find the humours in balance or the body will reject the cure. I see he adds to the statement by saying, this is, of course, elementary knowledge for the practical physician. I would have thought you would have learned this during your education. This during your education. Right, I'd, I'd sped through that a bit fast. It's all right. <laughs> Let's continue. Over the next few days, SCP-049 spent a considerable amount of time adjusting the organs of the bovine corpse with a number of large metal instruments. After eight days, SCP-049 produced a lightning rod, which Dr. Ham exchanged for an electric cattle prod attached to an extension cord and struck the bovine corpse in several locations. This action seemingly had the effect of reanimating the bovine, which once again became ambulatory, despite the inversion of the head and reorientation of its limbs. Interesting. Now, there, here become, begins the follow-up interview between Dr. Ham and SCP-049. We've watched you work for several weeks now, and honestly, I'm not sure I understand what you're doing. Can you describe your process in detail? Oh, goodness, no. The process is most intensive. As I said to your assistant, the best introduction you will find about my methods are here in my journals, as I have kept exhaustive records of my work there. I see. My concern, Doctor, is that we still don't understand what you're seeking to cure or how it manifests, or how turning these creatures into quasi-living mindless drones helps in that effort. You do not understand the pestilence, even after all this time. Doctor, it is an unspeakable horror, one that has shown its true face many times before and will again. I find myself blessed with the wisdom and good senses needed to root it out and destroy it. But many, like yourself, cannot. It is a cruel judgment, I fear, to be at the mercy of a disease you cannot fully comprehend. That still doesn't answer my question. How would you cure any kind of cure at all? It is a cure. You may laugh at my efforts if you please, but do not dismirch the good name of scientific progress that has developed this great mercy. What you so short-sightedly see here is a life better than any this creature could have hoped for, stricken as it was with pestilence. The creature is now clean unable to spread the pestilence and free from the terror it would have experienced otherwise. That's hardly a creature at all, Doctor. It's not even... Do not jape with me, sir. You and your colleagues are like so many others, unable to look past minor setbacks to see the salvation taking place before your very eyes. Do you wait to remove rotten timbers until the hall collapses on top of you? No, you find them and you pull them out and replace them with those untouched by rot. And most of all, you do not simply mock the structure because it now looks different to you. It is strong. It is free of disease. Sorry, I didn't mean to agitate you. I'm just trying to understand. Yes. Well, do mind your words in the future, Doctor. I am a professional, but even professionals may feel the bite of pride in dealing with criticism of their masterpiece. I will forgive this as an act of good faith between colleagues. Is there anything else I can help you with? No. That will be all. Another test subject, on the usual schedule. You know my preference of subjects with more human anatomies. Sending researchers note, SCP-049 does, does seem to genuinely want to help other humans, though it has not been able to provide concrete example of what exactly it's trying to save us all from. I have watched it now over several weeks, and while the outcomes do not seem to ever change, SCP-049 continues to claim that it is growing closer to its perfect cure. I think that the entity may be more aware of the reality of these outcomes than we would like us to think. Addendum 0493-04-16-2017 Incident Starting shortly after 049's initial containment, Dr. Ham conducted a number of interviews with the subject regarding its anomalous properties, and over time began to note its displeasure with its subjects and the 
SCP-049-2 instances. This continued for a period of several months, during which SCP-049 never ex exhibited any aggressive behaviors. On April 16th, 2017, as Dr. Ham was entering SCP-049's test chamber to conduct another routine interview, the entity began to grow anxious, anxious and asked Dr. Ham if he was feeling well. Following protocol, Dr. Ham reminded SCP-049 that the interview was required, after which the entity became hostile and attacked Dr. Ham, killing him. During a lapse in security protocol, and because Dr. Ham did not activate the in-chamber emergency system, Dr. Ham's corpse was not discovered until three hours later, at which point SCP-049 had converted into an instance of 049-2. In the aftermath of this incident, 049 was interviewed by Dr. Theron Sherman. Now, Milky, Theron would Sherman. you mind would you mind reading? Am I the, the doctor? doctor now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Interview, Dr. Sh uh, Theron, Tra uh, Theron Sherman, Site 42. Interview, interviewee, SCP-049. Begin log. I need you to explain yourself. SCP-049, you are being directed to explain your actions, and I will remind you that the failure to cooperate, cooperate will result in further restrictions during your containment. My actions do not need to be explained. You killed Raymond Ham and then butchered him until he... Not dead. No. Not dead. He is... He is cured. Cured? Cured of what? The pestilence, sir. I had thought you at least would realize what luck it is. I detected it before... Pestilence. You keep going on and on about this pestilence, but you have not once been able to properly identify this disease. What could you possibly see in him today that you had not seen him many times before? This, that is, that would be worth his life. He, the pestilence presents and progresses in unforeseeable fashions and has a queer way of of creeping into the unprepared and call it what you want doctor it was a mercy i did to him he is cured it's a vegetable i i would not expect you to understand you and your your ilk have proven time and time again to not be men of science but men of of emotion you cannot appreciate the horrors I have seen. Those many millions who have succumbed to the pestilence and have been changed. Who... Your cure cost Ray his life. No, good sir. I have saved it. You would allow this world to slip back into the... the despair of disease and death, ignoring that I have created a miracle and... I'm what offering disease? it freely what to be the, to the afflicted. He was a healthy man. You are not he worth was a this good argument, doctor. sir. You are short sighted and foolish. Dr. Ham was sick, and I. I cured him. I am the only one who can do this. My work must continue. There is so much still to learn, so much to do, and. Others can be I saved. Even you. Oh, you do not deserve it. Eight, Might nine, be saved. I can save them all. I can cast down this plague once and for all. I can do this. Only me. I, I, I saved. I saved him. Dr. Ham. I cured him. He was sick. I know he was sick. I know he was. And, and I... You are all sick, but I, I can save you. I can save all of you because I, I am the cure. End blog. <laughs> Just want to say that was fantastic. Well done. I'll give you a short round of applause. <laughs> okay, I will read for Doc Dr. Elijah Itkin in the next one. Post-incident report fun. interview. The following interview is an excerpt from the 4 16 17 or 49 incident report the interview was conducted by dr elijah itkin 
It took place three weeks after the start of the initial investigation. Date. 5-17-17. 5-7-17. My apologies. Dr. Elijah Itkin, interviewee, SCP-049. I'm going to do a bit of a different voice for this one. SCP-049. We are conducting this interview to close out our investigation of your actions taken on April 16th that have resulted in the death of a staff member. Do you have any comments to make? Only that I look forward to the day when you will allow me to resume my work. I have spent the last few weeks compiling my notes and constructing a new theory about how the pestilence was able to infect someone in such an insidious manner that I nearly couldn't detect it. Have you experienced any remorse for your actions for the death of Dr. Ham? Ah, yes. Well, the death of a colleague is always regrettable, but in the face of the pestilence, we must be swift, Doctor, and act without hesitation. Dr. Sherman noted in his report that you seemed mournful during your initial interview. Mourn? <laughs> Perhaps. I had not thought that... It is lamentable a fellow doctor became infected, but the work continues. Regrettable as, as it was, Dr. Ham's death provided important insight. Living human subjects are the only way to proceed forward, I am decided. My cure is of little use on dead flesh, and I have gleaned all I can from your generous supply of corpses. My desires turn towards tending to those still living who suffer from the disease. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, Doctor, I wouldn't be so sure. End log. This brings us to the end of SCP-049. I rather, I think that he is a rather creepy gentleman, despite his good intentions. Now, we move on to my personal favorite SCP. Is SCP three thousand Anon Tashesha. This uh, the Asha. <laughs> the name is it's derived from a uh, Hindu religion. Oh, that they explain it through in the logs, if I remember correctly, which we will get to in a moment. First, I, as the good clown host of this brigade, will read out. SCP-3000. As I do have a clearance level, I do have class 5 classification and clearance. Item number, SCP-3000. Object cl class, Dormiel. Dormiel is the class that is helpful to the Foundation and not outwardly aggressive. It is also, it is also an indicator that is basically impossible to contain in any way. Now, shortly you will understand why SCP-3000 is almost impossible to contain. Special Containment Procedures The area containing SCP-3000, currently a region of the Bay of Bengal, roughly 300 kilometers in diameter, is to be routinely patrolled by Foundation nasal, naval, nasal, naval as vessels. Under no circumstances are civilians allowed to attempt deep sea exploration or diving efforts in the quarantined area. Individuals believed to have contacted SCP 3000 are to be contained, quarantined, and processed at Site 151. Individuals affected by anomalous properties of SCP 3000 are to be held in containment indefinitely. The Foundation submarine SCP F Emertra is to monitor. Araminta is to monitor the location of the foremost selection of section of SCP-3000 currently located at the Ganges Fan, roughly 0 0.7 kilometers below beneath the bay. The Araminta is tasked with carrying out the Aztec protocol. Staffing regulations on board the vessel are subject to the guidelines of that protocol. For a full description of the ASAC protocol, see Addendum 3002. 
There is currently no known cure for exposure to SCP-3000. As such, affected individuals should be contained and quarantined for further, further evaluations. Individuals stationed aboard the SCPF Araminta do are not permitted to leave the vessel except for the purpose of carrying out the necessary procedures of the ATSAC protocol. protocol. Individuals who leave the vessel without proper authorization are considered lost. Under no circumstances should any individual at interact with SCP-3000 without authorization. Now, this is a very ominous containment, if you ask me. He's, it's telling you a lot about what it is, given the amount of danger there seems to be with interacting with 3000. Which, in a second, you'll understand what the danger is. Description. SCP-3000 is a massive, aquatic, serpentine entity strongly resembling a giant moray eel. Gimaranthax javanicus. My apologies for my bad Latin. I've not studied it in any detail. The full length of SCP-3000 is impossible to determine, but is hypothesized to be between 600 and 900 kilometers. The head of SCP-3000 measures roughly 2.5 meters in diameter, and sections of the body proper are as large as 10 kilometers in diameter. Huh? 10 meters in diameter. The um, brain's retraining a bit there. SCP-3000 is typically a sedent <laughs> sedentary creature, moving only its mo only moving its head in response to certain stimuli or during feeding. The majority of its body is located in and around the Ganges fan and rarely moves at all. SCP-3000 is a carnivorous is carnivorous, and despite its sedentary nature, is capable of moving quickly to dispatch prey. Despite its size, it is hypothesized that SCP-3000 does not require sustenance to maintain its biological functions. While SCP-3000 excretes a thin layer of a viscous, dark gray substance classified as Y909, see Addendum 3002 below. Through its skin as it consumes prey, the end result of its digestive process is currently unknown. SCP-3000 is a class 8 cognohazardous entity. Direct observation of SCP-3000 may cause severe mental alterations in viewers. Individuals who directly observe SCP-3000, as well as any individuals within an uncertain distance of SCP-3000, experience inexplicable head pain, paranoia, general fear and panic, and memory loss or alteration. The following is a log from SCP from Site-101's historical records written by Dr. Eugene Getz about initial discovery of SCP-3000 and the effects felt therein. Milky, would you mind reading this one? Uh, sure. Uh, I, got this. Uh, I need them all from... I'll be right back. The unease... I'm reading this whole thing here, right? Uh, just double checking. Okay, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Falsely. When asked about it, he could not respond, stating that he thought he was missing something he could not dis deduce. As we descend, as the de our descent continued, he began to act more and more erratic, at one point addressing himself as Darlene, and expressing uncertainty as to the task he was assigned to handle. Similar feelings were expressed by other members of the crew, but William felt it the most. His mem memtic Mementic? Resistance was... I think that's... I'm not sure. Memetic. Memetic. Oh. Okay. Ugh. Resistance was by far the lowest of us all, but he was a biologist, not a memet... 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 Memeticist? Memetic? Memetic? Memeticist? Mememe? Memeticist. Meme. Meme. Yes. <laughs> when we finally came in contact with the entity, he began whimpering and had to be sedated. 
I remember him muttering the word no over and over again, as if in disbelief. He went silent after a while as we approached its head. And when I looked back at him, something had gone from his eyes. He did not even so much as blink as we made our final descent. At around 04, uh, 09440, uh, I don't know how to say that in the military hours, uh, we first observed the head of the entity. The unease was palpable now. Several of the crew members complained of feeling hazy and other and of being uncertain what they were supposed to be doing. Captain Ritter, even the man's man, wrote it all off as a nitrogen intoxication and forced them to continue approaching the entity. When we were within 50 meters, the entity turned slowly to look at us. Even now, as I recall watching the thing coil around us in darkness, I can still hear Williams barking like a mad dog at the rear of the vessel, screaming and flailing, shouting about how he could see it, it in his head. Perkins and Harrison trying to restrain him, but he had got free and smashed his face in against one of the portals. He hit it so hard, he cracked the inner layer of the, the glass. The damage was bad enough that we had to surface. We tried to give Williams medication, medical attention, but he was too far gone at this point. He had pulp, pulp, he had pulped. Palpitations yeah. of, ooh, pulp, pulped? He pulped, yeah, it's just hmm. straight pulped. He had pulped himself against the glass. Jesus. Wow. Ooh, and yes. despite the trauma, he still spoke briefly as he was uh, as he lay dying. Nobody recorded it. We didn't think of it. Uh, we didn't think to at the time, but I remember it well enough. He said, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. But by the time we had reached the surface several hours later, Williams was dead. And at that time, I don't I didn't think much of what he had said. Just the ravings of a madman, of a man gone mad by the depths. I figured, I didn't know any better. But even now, I can still see the eyes of the creature. I see it hanging there in the darkness, illuminated by the light I can cannot source, and I feel the lingering dread that Williams must have felt that night in the submersible, as he was overcome by whatever void that foul thing slivered out of. Thank you, Milky. There are lots of words. Anyway, I shall read. Discovery. SCP-3000 was discovered in 1971. Shortly after, two Bangladeshi fishing boats and 15 fishermen were reported missing after drifting near the Indian coast. As the country of Bangladesh had only recently been established at the time and had been subject to significant political persecution on the part of Pakistan, this incident received high-profile media attention due to fears that it it was a result of foreign aggression. Local coastal dispatch units could not locate the missing boats, fueling further me media hysteria. Foundation researchers stationed in Kolkata, now Calcutta, now Kolkata, yeah, drew similarities between this disappearance and another incident a few years earlier. A thorough search aided by Mariant Marriott. Elshia counters revealed the location of two boats, as well as unknown, previously undiscovered mass, an unknown, previously undiscovered mass deep below the surface of the Bay of Bengal. Further investigation by Foundation divers discovered the existence of SCP-3000. The area was quickly secured, and current containment procedures were put in place in August, in April of. 1972, the ADZAC protocol was adapted in October of 1998. Addendum 1, Initial Contact Exploration Log. Note, the following transcript of audio logs was taken during initial deep sea diver contact with SCP-3000. Until this point, no foundation diver had come within 300 meters of SCP-3000. Divers were tasked with assessing the creature and determining the source of the thick Gray fluid that had been observed floating around its head. The dive team was composed of three members of MTF Orion 9, Kingfishers, led by MTF 09 Alpha. Launch point was through the airlock of the Foundation submarine SCPF Ravinsky. All divers were equipped with high pressure suits as well as front facing headlamps. 
Additionally, a tether was connected to MTF09 Alpha, which was then connected in a T-shape out to both Bravo and Foxtrot. I shall read all of Alpha. Aiden, do you mind reading Command? Mm -hmm. And Milky, can you read Bravo? I will yeah. also read Foxtrot. All right, Command. Yeah. Okay. Begin log. All right, Command. We're situated in the airlock and ready to roll. Confirmed. Go ahead and sound off. All right. Nine, nine Alpha, check. Oh. Uh, Bravo. Bravo. Orion <laughs> right, 9 Go. Alpha check. Orion right, 9 Bravo check. All right, men. We're in position around 500 meters from the head of the creature. Make sure your tethers are on good and tight. We don't want any of you getting separated out there. What's the visibility like down here today, Command? Stand by. About three meters. Too stark as fuck. Got it? <laughs> Why are we out so far? Why are we so far out? The size of this thing is hard to comprehend, and it's wrapped up in itself in several places. We can't get too close because there's too much body here. The entity hasn't moved in about three weeks. At all? Affirmative. It moves slightly with the currents down here, but nothing more than that. If it weren't for the head movement that was observed by the first submersible team, we probably wouldn't know if it was alive or not. That's reassuring. That's reassuring. All right, tethers are tight. Flood the chamber. Confirmed. Rushing water is heard as the airlock chamber floods. No other sound is heard for several minutes. After some time, the sound of rushing water stops. You both good? I'm good. It's fucking cold. Hopefully we won't be out for long then. Turn on your lights, boys. Here we go. All members of the dive team exit the airlock. There is a low mechanical sound as the airlock door closes behind them. A muffled click sound is heard, and the Stravinsky activates its aft floodlights. Hey, Alpha, I, uh, maybe this is a bad time to ask, but I can't remember how to turn on my lamp and... Your lamp is on, Foxtrot. Hey, what? What did you call me? Your designation, Mah Mahoney. Foxtrot. I'm Foxtrot, boss. Hang on, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean by designation. Your goddamn call sign, Bravo. What do you mean? Who's Bravo? I, uh... Shit, hang on. I was, I was going to say something. Barry, are you still there? Stand by. Go for command. Hey, we're having a little trouble out here. I'm not sure who... We seem to have some confusion over designations, and I'm not sure where we're going. Um, Fox Rod. What exactly are we? God, do you... Do you guys feel that? I just got this awful headache. It's like... Needling in the brain. Something. Dive team, be advised that we believe you may be experiencing some detrimental cognitive effects. Keep moving forward. We'll give you more information as we receive it. Noted. Command, be advised that Foxtrot has a, a terrible headache. I think we're going in the right direction. We can't see out there. You're roughly 150 meters from the head of the entity, Alpha. You should be getting a visual soon. Come on, I don't see anything. Where are we? All I see... I... Where... Where are we? We're almost there, Alpha. Dive team, be advised. We're picking up movement from the entity on radar. I... Barry, I don't see anything down here. What are we supposed to be looking... All I can... All, all, all I can see is darkness. There's a chill, foul wind blowing, pushing me towards a brink I can't see... Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Command! Bravo is unresponsive, requesting immediate cessation of mission. Wait a second. On the edge of nothingness, inches from oblivion. There's a sickness in my mind that I know can't be cured. Beyond me is only blackness, a single pair of dark eyes. What, what are you saying? Dive team, we're going to pull you back in immediately. We have reason to believe that... Harry, is that you? How can it be? I shoveled the dirt during your... And here's something out of there. Alpha, your light. Get your fucking... Silence. Only silence. My consciousness coming undone and only and only and only... Dive team. Something is moving towards you. Repeat. Something is moving towards you. Prepare to return to... Ah, this is shit. I can't see how far are we from the... It's right there. It's right there. Fuck. What are you both doing? Fuck. And only the eel remains. 
radio silence for 20 minutes. For 20 seconds. Uh, alpha? Radio silence for 30 seconds. 13 seconds. Alpha, Bravo, Foxtrot, do any of you hear us? <laughs> oh, thank God. Bravo, you need to speak up. We can't. Something, something's bound up the winch between you and us. Uh, we can't. It's opening its mouth. It's so dark. There's, ah, oh, where am I? What? Harry, how can it be? I shoveled dirt. Mahal. Mahoney. Mah Malney? Malney. Yeah. Malney, swim. Malney. Get away. There's only darkness. Swim. Only. There is suddenly tension on the tether attached to Str the Stravinsky. Zero, zero 09 Foxtrot's radio goes silent. There is the sound of struggle through the other two radios. Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Alpha. Bravo. Talk to me. Stay calm. What happened? Eat him. Fuck. He's gone. It took him whole. He. God. Damn it, Alpha! What are you doing? Alpha? Cut the fucking goddamn feather, Alpha! It's pulling us in. Who? Fuck! Ah! Total radio silence for thirty seconds. Tether attached to Stravinsky is pulled free from its moorings and disappears. Alpha, Bravo, do you copy? Radio Alpha, hmm. Bravo, do you copy? This is Bravo. I'm I'm floating in the dark. I can see shapes moving through the fog, but they're hard to make out. I cut my tether. Alpha wouldn't. I think he's gone. I don't see his light anymore. Acknowledged. We're coming to... Hang on. Just let me think for a second. Cognitation. Cognition. This thing. It doesn't work around it. Your brain can't form thought. Static. It hurts. It's like dying and... Bro... Bravo, do you have eyes on the entity? It's in my head, guys. Coiled up there like a snake. And something about it, it's caustic. I can see it. Just in front of me. It's not doing anything. It it's, isn't moving. Just hanging there. With its mouth open. I think it's finished eating. The fluid is seeping through the skin around its head. About a meter black. Just looking at the stuff is making me... Like the room is spinning. I feel nauseous. My head isn't working right. <laughs> There's an abortion under the floorboards and another is in this. Wait, this is wrong. That wasn't me. Who said that? My, I'm going to collect the sample. Hang on. Bravo. Bravo, we're going to send out a crew to get you. Just hold on. No, don't do that. No, just have to be trained to not feel, feel the things I need. I'm feeling. Otherwise, it will get into you. Maybe it will anyway. Who knows? I think it, it feels like the end of the world down here, fellas. My heart is really going off the charts, and I think I'm dying. Just, I got a sample. I'll attach it to one of those little balloons and let it float up. You'll be able to get it later. Don't spend too much time around this stuff. It, it doesn't, your mind, it... Bravo? I think I'm dying. I'm dying. I know I'm dying. This is it. I just want it to go away. F I just want to get away from you. You know, it occurs to me. <laughs> Don't see anyone else out here. It's so dark. Bravo! Over the next half hour, the SCP SCPF Stravinsky attempted to approach 09 Bravo with no success. Command continued to attempt to communicate with 09 Bravo, but Bravo grew increasingly unintelligible and before eventually going completely silent bravo's radio stayed active over the next three days and intermittent breathing could be heard until the radio ceased functioning addendum 3002 as that oh, protocol that, that was fun that was hell of fun it was chaos it became very it got quite dark towards the end there but that's part of the fun of the scp foundation isn't it Gotta admit, I would love to record that again, where we can do the static and the silence and have like radio effects to our voices and stuff. That would be really yeah. fun to do as a recording. It, would be. it really would be. be fucking epic. We should do it. We should plan it. Okay. Are you running a YouTube channel here? Um, I've got one. Good for that. Yeah, I've got two actually. One for my vods and one for. Oh, maybe we should make plan in the future. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Top secret. SCP Foundation official documentation. 151 Hollister Azak Protocol. This protocol dictates certain interactions with Class 8's cognohazardous entity, SCP-3000, and as such, Level 5-3000 classified. Preface. The following protocol was developed in conjunction with researchers from Site-29 and Site-50, as well as researchers stationed at Site-151. Some sections may have been redacted to remove material above this classification. Adherence to this protocol required for all personnel assigned to Site-151 as well as all personnel assigned to the SCPF Emerenta. Abstract. What? The, S the 151 Hollister Azak Protocol has been developed and implemented to create a strategy for the mo management of the Y909 chemical compound excreted by SCP-3000. Protocol information. The Y909 compound originally discovered by the late Dr. Adam Hollister is a critical component in several modern and experimental amnestic compounds. Specifically, the following amnestics now contained contain a refined version of the Y909 compound. Class A 2016 variant, Class D 2016 variant, Class E 2016 variant, Class X 2017 variant, Class XX 2017 variant, redacted Redacted. Azac class experimental compound. Foster class experimental compound. And ellipse class experimental compound. The inclusion of Y909 compound has shown a marked increase in the stability and long term effectiveness of the aforementioned amnestics. Overall, amnestics utilizing the Y909 breakdown 78% percent slower than their standard counterparts in cold storage and 52 percent slower in their standard counterparts than their st standard counterparts at room temperature additionally individuals administered with an amnestic regimen utilizing y909 show a marked increase in suggestibility memory clearance and significant decrease in additional side effects such as nausea vomiting bowel distress blurred vision Headaches, insomnia, heart damage, and others. What? That I wouldn't want any amnestics if they could destroy my heart. Anyway, individuals treated with these amnestics ex express significantly fewer intrusive memories as those without Y909, with some individuals exposed to experimental compounds expressing no intrusive memories whatsoever, even at the five and ten year marks. Due to the effectiveness of the, these treatments with the addition of Y909, the continued inclusion of this compound is essential to modern foundation amnestic application. Reliance on the continued use of Y909 necessitates its collection for the foreseeable future, as a synthetic version of the compound has not yet been discovered. As such, this protocol dictates the way that the compound is collected off SCP-3000 and the way the personnel are to interact with SCP-3000. Below is a brief framework of the procedure. Detailed information can be found in the full ATSAC brief. Members of MTF Epsilon 20, Night Fishermen, are prepared to, sub are to prepare a subject for deliverance to the feeding site. One individual D-class subject is to be administered a sedative and equipped with a high-pressure diving suit. The subject is to be tethered to an underwater ROV within the aft airlock. The airlock is to be flooded and the subject is to be towed by the ROV towards the feeding site. Upon reaching the feeding site, the ROV is to disconnect its tether and return to the Emerenta. Throughout the stage, SCPF Emerenta should monitor SCP-3000's position and adjust course if the entity begins to move away from the feeding site. Mission Command will pr provide additional instructions during this phase, if necessary, personnel on board the SCPF Marenta are to monitor SCP 3000 during feeding sessions. During this time, no personnel to, are permitted to leave the Marenta without authorization from Mission Command. At this point, after total consumption of prey, SCP 3000 will begin to excrete Y909 near the foremost section of its body. Specialized teams of deep sea divers are to exit S. CPF Emerentia through the aft airlock and approach SCP-3000. 
collection of Y909 must take place during SCP-3000's digestive period, which is currently believed to be roughly two and a half hours after consumption of prey. Teams must return to launch craft before the end of this period. During this period, typical effects of SCP-3000 are less severe, though command should continue to monitor these teams for damage to their cognition. After collection of Y909 is complete, personnel to transfer the collected substance to secure containers before returning to the surface. The, the mission administrator on board the Amaranta is to monitor the substance throughout transport. The last one, which is going to be a lot of voice acting between characters. Oh, is this, uh, are we just going to do this uh. last log? <laughs> yes. And then we... Okay. Um, yeah. Aiden, do you want to do Manava? I, I can do Manava if you like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Milky, okay, do you want... Sai, Rachel? Hmm? Sai. Oh, Sai. No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, okay, who am I doing? Uh, Krishan Murodi. I only see two voice actors in this. Yeah, Krishan and Manava. No. Yeah, I, I just read, like, giant walls of text. I'm like... Okay, so you want to take a small breathing break? <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind. Okay, so I'm Krishnava. Yes. Okay. Krishnamurthy? Krishnamurthy? Yeah. Okay, I will read the addendum before, you, before we begin the log. Okay, go, go for it. Addendum 3003. Psychological Evaluation. Notes on Redacted Redacted 2009. Level 3 researcher Bet Kamantraman. Bet Kamantraman? I apologize. Bet Kamantraman? That sounds right. I apologize for my bad pronunciation. <laughs> Krishna Murthy attempted to exit the Amaranth's aft airlock without diving equipment, but was quickly restrained and the airlock cycle aborted. Despite having a CVR, CRV of 26 and having not displayed the previous signs of depression or suicidal, Attempt prior to his assignment on the Amaranta, mm -hmm. Krishnamurthy was interviewed by st staff, clinical psychologist, and Dr. Anad Manavi Manava to acquire a better standing of SCP 3000's potential effect on his psyche. Begin log. Hi, Venkat. How are you feeling? Unwell. <laughs> That's what I hear. Do you want to talk about what happened today? We don't have to, if you don't want to. We can talk about something else. I'm tired, Anand. I understand. This assignment has been stressful on all of... It's not... No, it isn't the stress. I've done this before. I've been on... I don't actually know if I've done this before. You have. I don't remember it, any of it. I've been getting these out-of-context feelings, like my body's reacting to reflex it didn't know it had everything is so disconnected and trying to keep it together is i'm just tired when did you start feeling this way how long have we been down here i don't remember i don't know when i honestly don't i wish i could tell you more than that but i have nothing i look at the place in my mind and there's something else there or Something, sometimes nothing at all. What do you mean, something else? I've been having these... I've been having other people's dreams, Anand. I see faces I don't recognize, places I don't... I know I've never been, or maybe I have. I don't know. How can I know what is real or not when I can't trust my own mind? Well, maybe I can help you with that, Venkat. We can go over things that you've uh, forgotten, and I can... Don't patronize me. I know you felt it, Anand. Your mind is getting hazy. Parts of you slip, uh, start to slip. Your memories grow faint, fading in and out until they're gone or worse, replaced. You see parts of... Uh, you see past that aren't yours, experiences that you've never lived. You, you start becoming other people, or nobody at all. Venkat, please. I'm just trying to help. Do you even know my work before we met? Come to think of it, I don't even remember how we met. I know your name. Now, 
I know that you're a psychologist, but are we friends? Are we brothers? I don't know. I don't know how I know you. We work together. I know that. I still have that. But other things, they come and go. I don't know if I'm married or have children. I see. And that, that isn't the worst of it. I know this is happening to me. I know that my mind is coming apart, but there's something else in there uh, too. Something rising out of the out of the smoke of the smoldering consciousness. That eel. The eel. I don't I don't remember my mother. I can't hear her voice, but I can remember her face. I can't remember how she smelled or how she but what I do remember is she told me about gods. There is a god called Ama Anan Tashesha. Anan Tashesha. Tashesha. <laughs> A serpent, the king of serpents, said to lie beneath Vinshu, Vish, Vishnu in the cosmos, a six-headed snake god. Isn't that something? It, yes, I'm familiar. Ah, of course. I'm sorry, I forgot. She, I don't remember much, but I do remember that she told me about how Ananta Sheshe would, would linger past the end, gazing upon the darkness past the end of time. She said that when the light of the universe has gone out, all that would be left is Ananta Shesha. I will have worked my entire life for the foundation. So much I can recall. I have struggled to build my name and reputation, done everything I could to do uh, to leave something, anything, some kind of mark that says I was here, but... What is it? I, I believe that SCP-3000 is Ananta Shesha. I believe that this this aberration, this treachery against cognition, is the result of being in the presence of a god, not just a god, but a god who exists across all time, all at once, and even beyond. Maybe maybe some part of the nothingness beyond the edge of time is part of an antasheshe. As well, maybe it acts as a as a conduit, some kind of. Then cut, please. We're scientists. No, let me finish. In defiance of nothingness that comes after this, all that this, all of this, there's an antasheshe. There's a chance that my memories might live on, that I might be remembered like the memories I've seen, I've been seeing through me. I don't, I don't have the proof of this, but when I looked into the eyes and I saw what it showed me, I was afraid. I'm merely a mediocre man, Anand. This was a fear that I have refused to acknowledge for years, a fear of irrelevance, that no one will know who I am when I die, afraid of being forgotten, afraid of my life being meaningless, afraid of being alone, afraid of dying. <sighs> There's a terror within me that I cannot re reconcile, reconcile. And Anand, I want to lie to you and tell you that the more of the Naga that does not terrify me as well. But between this infinite darkness, infinite dark I have gazed into, I have made up my mind. And Lord. Den oh, I need a break. Well done. Well done. Addendum 3004. Incident video and audio log. Oh, oh no. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> I'm fucking out. <laughs> Tapping out. That's me tapping out. I'm done. Don't worry, I'm, I'm gonna read this one. Don't worry. No, I'm I'm gonna bounce. Oh, uh, I love you. This is a lot of fun. I have unfortunately some things I need to do. But then I will end. Oh, we're almost at the end of three thousand. Not that much left. But yeah, you can go for it. I'll lurk. But I'm I'm done. I understand. Perhaps we shall continue this another time. I hope everyone Hell has yes. enjoyed us reading this. An Antashesha is sad more than creepy or anything i find it to be a very sad story at least for the humans involved in meeting this being beyond their understanding now as a as a side bonus i'm gonna play a horror game tonight which is not something i play <laughs> i'm gonna play a game that i have completed but i haven't played all of them yet because i'm gonna play alien Iso isolation 
mm -hmm. DLC that comes with it. Or at least it came <laughs> with the copy I got. Because I got it free on Epic and it came with the extra DLC. Mm -hmm. One of that great game. And I'm about to go and play the base game as it happens. Oh, you're going to enjoy <laughs> it. Good. Also, I will, also, uh, I will also... Sorry. Yeah. Because I believe you and um, Milky are now have your own things to run to, so I may as well end yeah. mm. this section of the stream for now. That yeah, was great. It was fun. Mm -hmm. I would very much like to do the um the diary entries at some point that are following on from the bit we just did, because there's quite a few journal entries, but it's like almost entirely me reading for like twenty minutes. <laughs> so... Yeah, I was like, I would love to get you to read those, but it's also a long, long sections, and you guys both mm. have things you need to get to. I believe yeah. your yeah. your stream will start in give or take. -ish. I will be lurking. Yeah. Remember? And Milky's gonna just lurk while I get the shit scared out of me playing more fucking horror games. I'm very, very, very <laughs> bad. I need, I need to build points in your channel, so obviously I'll lurk. I will also potentially if if my cowardice takes over, switch to something less terrifying. Because mm -hmm. having finished Alien Isolation, that game still scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Like to this day, it 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 scares me. I can't help On it. That note. But that thing, it scares me. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Johnny. I will see you later. Yeah. Have fun. I will. Johnny. Johnny. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna head out. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. No problem. It was very interesting. <laughs> There's even more. Also, if you want a good it. For anyone who, who was freaked out or sad and wants to, but still wants to read SCPs, I recommend you go and read SCP-999. Yeah. It's potentially the most wholesome SCP you'll ever read. Uh, so next time I'm going to get on, everyone on, to read SCP. All right, I'm going to head out. Goodbye. Bye. Now, for everyone else who's still with me, I'm going to get them to read SCP. 16, uh, is it 1876? I think it's 1876. It's potentially the. It has another name, which one of my mods will scream at me if I ever attempt to get him to read it, but I will do it. I will make him read it. It is called. The other name for it is. There were dragons. I don't know why, but I feel like making people read sad things that are both beautiful and incredibly sad. But, all that said, it is time for me to attempt to scare the shit out of myself while wearing a waistcoat, while wearing this fetching, uh, pose. If it finds alien isolation. Ooh. Adding to alien isolation. The horrors. Uh, let me find it. I just want to think quick. gonna be fun. Here we go. Play game. Last survivor. Oh, I did! I did! Monkey was great! I, I liked the whole thing. I, I, I had a great time. I'm going to play as medium because I'm stupid. Last time, I, I don't know what difficulty I played on, but I suffered.
Let's see how this goes. Oh, we get a phase. Ripley. I'm playing the, the DLC for this. This is a game I do. I like, but also. The ship. We'll take our chances in the shuttle. Also, despise. Good. We're going to need coolant for the air support system. Parker, I powered up the shuttle. I, I just want something. Doing a thing quick, and I'll be right with you. Sort of thing. Right. Well, now. How shall this go? Oh. Have you got those coolant tanks ready? We're doing this. You want to give us a hand down here? Not really. Cool. He's crouch. I don't like this room. No, no, no. I haven't played this in a while, oh but God. fucking hate this. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! Lambert is gonna kill us! Lambert, for Christ's sake, get out of the way! Get out of the way, Lambert! Oh no, not again. I don't know how long I'm gonna play. Come on! Parker? Lambert? Fuck. I don't I mm, I don't like this. See now Aiden said he's also gonna go play this, right? But he's playing the base game, which means for like Lambert? half an hour there's none of Lambert. the Lambert! Shitty bits don't happen for a while. Do I have a flamethrower? Oh, no, yes. Yes, yes. Flamethrower, you fall. Right, give me a second to recompose my nose. Game freaked me out before, and it's still will to now. Okay. How does this happen? Fuck you! Fuck! I hate that thing! God. It gets me every time! It scares the shit out of me! Uh, if I if I cowered out and oh change to something else, no. Oh god. I will have zero regrets about bitching out and playing something else after like ten minutes. And you couldn't shame me into like continuing this game. It, it, mm. First time scared the shit out of me. And finishing it was. Less than fun. What it, you can't, that's an in-game action. I think other games. Is it? Thank you, you got me killed. Did I just die or?
I, what just happened? I'm so confused. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I'm allowed to no part of this. Okay. I you can redeem you can give yourself the points back. I will no part of it. Also, that's an out of game action. You can't ban me from leaving a game. Ah. Two poles. I still hate this shit. I fucking hate this game. Why did I decide this was a good idea? I'm an idiot. Like, I am a. <laughs> Fuck this game. Fuck it so hard. With the goddamn cacti. I fucking hate this. Yeah, I am. I'm actually here. I'm still here. I'm just contemplating my life choices right now. I think I made all of them were mistakes. And I need to. Go home and rethink my life. Mm -hmm. I would rather play literally in this right now. I don't have the constitution for this right now. I don't. I just did a fun SCP reading and now I'm doing this and I'm. Parker, I powered up the shuttle. Have you got those cool tanks ready? Gripped my soul. Not really. I don't want to go anywhere near you. Because there's a fucking xenomorph. That I can't escape. I can't shoot it. I should install dead space so I can actually play a horror game where I can kill the bastards that come at me. Where the hell are you? Not near you because I don't want to go near you. That means triggering things that I don't want to do. I don't want to. I really don't want to. Oh my God. Also, I'm so glad no one was here to clip me screaming like a little girl. It's too long, so no one can clip me doing it, so... not go find the VOD and do that. You're not going to do that to me. You're not that mean. I'm not a fan of getting the shit scared out of me. Lambert? Lambert! Parker! Wrong way, which means say things. Oh, 
appreciate it. No, no. no that's me. Mm, that's your fault. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to fail on this and play literally anything else. I really don't want to. I, I, I don't want to. Right. You know what? Fuck it. I want to have fun tonight. This is not that fun. I will try this again when I can ask Steph to help tell me what to do. Because I, I, I genuinely will have not. I'm out. No. Fuck, fuck this. Fuck this shit. I am out. I am out. Like a fucking bandit. Fuck this shit. I am out, out, out. What, what do I have that's vaguely horror-like, but not likely to fuck with me quite so hard? Uh, gotta have. Some. Uh, looks like spooky, but not scare the shit out of me. Spooky, just mildly weird. Uh, 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 that I don't play horror games, so I don't have much, thankfully. I play what? Uh, Warhammer and claim that the grim darkness of the far future is ideal. I guess I've lost my friend. Oh, this is it. Okay, half. I don't have Half Life installed, though. I really shouldn't do it. All Half Life. That's a good game. Um, I, put, I could play Jump King. That counts as a fucking horror game. But no, 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 no. On the roof. Take the station without it. I want to have fun. Maybe I should just go to my regularly, regularly scheduled Yakuza, but that's for tomorrow night. Tonight. I have in Game Pass. Maybe there's something there I can play. Uh, maybe I should just end have a short stream tonight and have like a super long one tomorrow night. That might be worth. It. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna raid into Aiden tomorrow, my my great allies, because I'm not feeling horror tonight, and I'm also not that. Yeah, I don't know what. So I think that's a good, that's a good compromise for me. Going into letting others, I was having so much fun with the readings, though they were great. I will do that again, one hundred percent soon. But I have convinced myself this is a terrible idea. So. I don't know what I'm doing in Alien either. So. Right. I'm loping out of a stream. I hope everyone had fun what tonight. It was great. Um, it's short stream, but that's fine. I can do short streams once in a while. I will do a long stream on a night. Um, good night, everybody.